In this video, we're going to be doing a festive mince pie shoot. What's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. This is a great channel for photographers, especially food photographers, so if that interests you then click subscribe down below. In this video we're going to be doing a festive mince pie shoot and we're going to be doing it with some festive Christmas lights. So nice twinkly fairy lights are going to be in the background and I'm going to show you exactly how you can get this look in your photos. First of all we need to bake some mince pies. Just kidding. I bought some from the shop. I've never baked a mince pie in my life. So first of all, we need to get our mince pies. The next thing we need to get is some nice fairy lights. So I've just got these little battery pack ones. These work the best because they're not gonna have some bulky wires and they're quite small and they don't have really bright, distracting little lights. These are the nice little snowflake ones, but you can test a different varieties around and see what you like in your photos. I'm also gonna include some other Christmas props like this bit of a Christmas tree here. I wouldn't suggest going too overboard on all of the props because you don't want to take away from the main subject which in this case is our mince pies. Now we know what we're going to be shooting and roughly how we want that image to look, we're going to start setting up our scene. So here we've got the backgrounds and the light. So I'm using the wood background that I made in last week's video. I'll link that up here if you're interested in making one of these yourself. And also just one of my hand painted backgrounds in the background, just because we're gonna be shooting this at about a 45 to a 25 degree angle. So we might catch some of the background in there as well. I like to get my light roughly in the right position of where I'm gonna be shooting, but this can be changed and usually is changed a little bit when the subject gets in there to get it in exactly the right position. But just for the room's sake, it's good to kind of get an idea of where that will be. The next thing to do is to gather all of the props we're gonna be using for the shoot. So although I mentioned we're just gonna be using a few Christmas props, we've also got things to collect like linen napkins, plates, chopping boards, trays. I like to collect way more props than I'm going to use just so I've got the variety and a quick change out if I change my mind while shooting, which happens all the time. Usually when I shoot with flash, I don't worry too much about the room lights or the window in this room because it's not super bright and I always cancel it out with the flash anyway. But for this particular shoot, we are going to have to shut the blind and turn off the room light. Before we turn off the room light though, I'm going to get my scene set up so I can actually at least see what I'm shooting and I'm not kind of aiming blindly in the dark. Now we've got the scene set up, I'm going to make sure that light is exactly where I want it for our subject, so the mince pies at the front. I'm going to aim the flash away from the fairy lights slightly, so it's aiming just onto the mince pie. So get your lighting and your camera set up for shooting this mince pie. I just want to start to mention this was shot on the same day. I changed my top because I spilt my lunch down me like a four year old. For this photo, I shot it quite wide open, so on this lens it goes down to f4. You can go wider than that, but I think for these, for this setup, I wanted to make sure I was getting the full mince pie, and if you were doing something a bit smaller, you could probably go a bit wider, but to get that whole mince pie, and I thought f4 was just right, and it still give a really nice bokeh effect, bokeh, bokeh, bokeh effect to the lights in the background, but it still allowed us to see a lot of that mince pie at the front. Because we are shooting wide open on, on this, I did have to keep the flash pretty, pretty low, probably as low as it would go. So with these images, having a wide aperture throws those lights and those fairy lights in the background out of focus a lot more and it gives a really nice bokeh effect and it kind of makes them a bit bigger. When we up our aperture to f4, 
8, you can see that these lights got a lot smaller and they don't give us dreamy effect, I think. So I prefer it at F4, but it's completely up to you what you choose to go for with this one. The other setting that really affects how your fairy light photos will look is your shutter speed. Normally when I'm shooting with flash, I keep my shutter speed at 1 over 100, which is just normally how I shoot with flash because any quicker and my flash doesn't fire properly. Any slower, I don't want to get in any ambient light when I'm normally shooting with the room light, so I keep it at f1 over 100. For this shoot, I shot it at 1 over 5, and that is why we needed to make sure all of our lights were turned off, because if I hadn't turned all the lights off, f1.5 would have brought in a lot of that ambient room light or distracting shadows from the window. The reason we need a longer shutter speed is to make sure we see those lights and those lights get a long enough time with the shutter open to really show up on the photo. This next image was shot at shutter speed of 1 over 40 and as you can see the lights start to look a little bit dimmer and then if we shot it at my normal shutter speed when shooting with flash which is 1 over 100 you can see the very very small and it kind of it looks a bit strange just looks like a wire in the background <laughs> looks like I've turned them off. There's a few different things you can play about with here you might need to increase your ISO, but with this, I kept it as low as I could. I think it was actually at 64, so it was even lower than 100. Because we were because I was taking my images wide open, there was no need to keep a really high shutter speed. But play around with the aperture and the shutter speed and see which one you prefer. Another way to change how the image looks is to move the fairy light further away from the subject, and this will also create more of that bokeh effect in your images. Closer to the subject, there's more likely they're going to be in focus, so they're going to be that little bit smaller and a bit more easy to tell what they are. This is how my setup looked when I was happy with the photo. So I did a few different photos and this is what I ended on. As you can see, it's just a really simple one light setup, a few different props, like I said, don't use all of the props, but definitely used a few varieties and had the lights just kind of over the Christmas tree, just in the background, just so you can just see it in what would have been that really shadowy area, just to bring in a bit more of an interest, a bit more of a story to the final image. That is everything in today's video guys i hope you liked it if you've got any questions let me know in the comments below and i'll get around to answering them give this video a thumbs up and i'll see you in the next one over the christmas period i'm trying to do a few little behind the scenes of the christmas shoots i've got planned so next week we'll either have mulled wine or bailey's hot chocolate how about you let me know which one you'd rather see in the comments bye guys thank you <laughs>